and let us all that we can to build a better future. All right, folks, I'm going to play not one, but two videos. This other video that I'll be playing afterwards, um, it's not in the show notes, but I played it in a previous episode of Hard Lens Media. So what am I talking about? Well, there is a video that caught my attention and shout out to Jimmy Dore and Sabby Sabs uh, for sitting through it and dissecting it. Now, they did a fabulous takedown, but it's AOC discussing the strategy of force the vote. Now, this video of her making the statement came out on January 6th. And the issue is, especially that, that we're seeing here with force the vote, is we know it works. Now, in theory, the Democrats, the 15 congressmen and women who are on the force the vote petition, could have done the same thing that we saw from the Freedom Caucus. Now, a lot of people who are liberals or progressives who are dismissing the GOP and the force of vote and saying that it's that it still wouldn't solve anything. Were these Republican lawmakers fighting for our best interest? No, they were fighting for key positions and positions of power in the United States House. But if you want to make things happen in Washington, D.C., let's face it, if you're a politician, you want to build your career career and showcase your power. Those House Republicans were able to get out concessions out of Kevin McCarthy for their own selfish designs, whether or not they want to help out the American people. It's debatable because if you vote Democrat or Republican, you're supporting a two party system that doesn't have your best interest. But AOC gives this word salad statement. That's about seven minutes long, but it feels like two hours about forced to vote, organizing grassroots. And she has some time to throw some shade. Now, Lauren, before I play this video, I think you came up with a perfect response for this video. I just want to get your thoughts before we pull it up. Well, when I when I watched the video, it just kind of seemed like she was just making a lot of excuses about why they're not going to do anything and like just throwing everybody she could under the bus except for taking any kind of responsibility herself. Um, and then she was trying to pretend like it makes a huge deal that they have all of these new squad members now. Um, and she like brings up a whole bunch of things that the squad has stuck together on. Um, but none of the things that she brings up actually came to pass. Like nothing came to fruition. So it's like great to know you can stick together and still get nothing done. And she was just so proud of herself. And it was just a little bit irritating to listen to her try and pretend like anything good actually has come from the squads sticking together. Exactly. So folks, um, I look, I don't want to sit through this, but we have to hear it. And plus her little shade thrown at independent media is downright petty, but I will help you try and decipher through the word salad. And Lauren, if there's anything you want to pause at, just let me know. So that way we can break this video down. Uh, let's get ready to hear this uh, whopper of an excuse. And it really goes to show how much you need of a coalition in order to really forcefully negotiate for these things. So when people say, you know, why don't we do this? Now, there was an excuse. OK, now look uh, or not excuse. There was an opening in 2021. There were 15 congressmen and women who were on the force of vote petition. I played that video that Matt Orfila did about force of vote calling these representatives, AOC included, they had the power to form a voting block to do something. There's no excuse that they didn't have enough, quote unquote, progressives. Just throwing it out there, folks. First of all, there's a lot of cost and dysfunction. Second of all, those people who are holding out right now, they may have made certain structural gains, but they have also made incredible reputational and relational harm within their caucus. And so if you are trying to get something done within your caucus moving forward, you still need members of your caucus. And that at the core is an element of electoral politics that is simply inescapable. Um, even when you look at someone like Bernie Sanders' tenure in the House, where he was the amendment king, you needed your party to pass your amendments. Um, and so, you know, you have this faction that is in a lot of trouble moving forward. Okay, so again, here's a, here's a pause right here. That faction that's quote-unquote in trouble, they just showed their power, and they're able to give Kevin McCarthy a headache. I dread to think how much more health issues Kevin McCarthy is going to have. If the Freedom Caucus truly does the same thing that the Tea Party did, 
doesn't matter about reputation. In Washington, D.C., all these people are scumbags. Watch the show that I do with uh, Farron every Monday. All these politicians, all what they care about is their own individual interests. They're not like one big team, yay team. They're thinking about their careers two years, four years, six years, eight years down the road. Well, I don't Repu think they care about their reputations that much either. At least yeah. they don't care what we think of them. Mm -hmm. Like, because again, what we think doesn't really matter. They are pretty confident in their ability to get reelected and do the things that they want to do. And so she's saying like, oh, well, they've ruined their reputations. And it's like, it's not going to affect them at all, though. Yeah. And and so the thing is, and that, that, that's a great point, because they don't give a damn about their reputations to us. They're, they're all scumbags. They all have their own fair share of dark secrets. Um, but they showed, and this is something that AOC is going to try and wiggle around, what the Freedom Caucus showed. And again, this video came out on January 6th. They showed that they can get whatever they want out of the speaker. Now, in theory, those 15 congressmen and women who are on the force to vote petition could have done the same thing too. But here's the thing about Democrats. They are not a big tent party. They are very, a small tent party. And the only way you get in it is if you conform to their neoliberal agenda and you fall in line. I played a video of Ryan Grimm asking Ro Khanna, will you do force to vote? And Ro Khanna gave a word salad, but for the most part, he was saying, no, if the Democrats ever get the house again in 2024 and challenge Hakeem Jeffries, they're not going to do it. Including despite having made certain structural gains. So a lot of people, I mean, this was like very bloody, like think of it like a really bloody bar fight. Like no one comes out with all their teeth, without any broken noses, with like, you know, everyone has had some some blood drawn and it's and we haven't even been sworn in yet. Um, as opposed to the Democratic caucus. Now, the strength here when you are in a minority, the play here is to be united as much as possible. Because if you don't have people who break, then you can pick off the other side with just a matter of a handful of people. So as long as Democrats don't uh, you know, remain united in a minority, then all the votes you need to win on a certain thing are, depending on how a margin is, three, four, or five. So when it comes down to Democrats winning, that means they'll all come in agreement for, I don't know, military defense spending, uh, supporting lobby groups, big oil, the prison industrial complex, big pharma, the healthcare insurance industry. But what about, I don't know, student debt forgiveness, Medicare for all, women's reproductive rights? Mm -hmm. Lauren, your thoughts? So, I mean, I love that she's like, well, the Democratic Party is going to stick together and like we're going to join together in this and this and this. And it's like, well, where were you before then if you, you the Democratic Party and this new minority is going to stick together? Where were you before? Like there are so many votes that have come through Congress recently where it's like, something good could have happened for us, uh, the people, but the Democrats had a couple of key people who didn't stay uh, in line and they did vote against, again, Medicare for all. They voted against getting some of these things on the floor even. So she can mm -hmm. say all she wants that they're going to stick together and, you know, fight for you or whatever. But it's it's been shown over and over in the past couple of years that that's just a lie. Yeah. And again, it's... It's just more excuses. Hang on, folks. I'm sorry to put you through this abuse, but, you know, I, I know Jimmy and Sabrina went through it. Uh, you could check it out on Sabrina's YouTube show as well. They they talk about it, but we got to go through this, too, because this is the kind of stuff we were saying about the Democrats and how they just give excuse after excuse after 2021 when the force of vote didn't happen, when they abandoned us again. Um. You know, and people say Lauren Boebert has more spine than you. Lauren Boebert won her race by 500 votes. Lauren Boebert took a Trump plus, what, nine district and nearly lost it to an up and coming Democrat as an incumbent member of Congress. Lauren Boebert is dramatically weakened, dramatically weak. Dramatically weakened, possibly. But did she get what she wanted out of the Speaker of the House? Yes, she did. Yeah. More so than you did, AOC. So it's debatable what happens. And look, a lot can happen between now and the next election cycle. And there's plenty of things for her to capitalize on. And no, this is not me being a pro-Republican. Absolutely not. But you got to call it as you see it. In this world of politics, there's a lot of the balls in Lauren Boebert's court right now. So there you go. And the people of Colorado nearly sent her packing. If, if 500 go. people voted differently that day, this would not be happening right now. And so, um, you know, 
if you I mean, talk about a what if scenario a though I, I know so like, go on, well go on, if go on, this then away. that was like yeah but guess what that thing the first thing the if statement didn't yeah. happen so like you can well if this then that all you want to but the if part was is crucial that's the important part and it didn't happen so it's like you can say <laughs> you can say whatever you want well if only if only 500 more people it's like yeah but guess what they didn't though they didn't yeah. though and now we're in this situation so like get out of here with the what if scenario from mm -hmm. the past focus on the what if scenarios for the future and maybe you can do something about it yeah you can what if something as much as you want but all it happened all what matters is what happened or what is going to happen a what if is just a what if it's a scenario that will never come into fruition and we could theorize about it but you know the thing about a what if it's like santa claus leprechauns the Loch Ness monster and bigfoot none of them exist it's all fictional what if what if what if hey i like science fiction too what if what if what if but here's what matters aoc there was that opportunity in 2021 and you said that it was violence republican she almost cost you your majority and if it frankly wasn't for the New York State Democratic Party and the New York State Democratic Party's leadership and the incompetence there, we would be having that gavel right now. Yo. Yeah. Also, throwing the blame on somebody else again. Also, another it's another what if statement. Well, if they had been more competent, if if they had done their jobs, if they'd been less incompetent, we would still be in the majority. Like, what is that? Hey, yeah. Lord, Lord, yeah. I you think? I, I got I got a what if for you. Okay, so oh, I love what, it. Let's go. What if what if what if the Democrats actually acted on that uh, memo that was leaked from the Supreme Court and actually helped codify Roe v. Wade? I mean, they did have a majority. What if they actually used their power? And what if Joe Biden actually used his uh, office of presidency and actually got on the bully pulpit to codify Roe v. Wade? I mean, what that's what if that's then? A, yeah, what if what then? if what if what if what if what if everybody, <laughs> everybody, mandatory what if in the live stream chat? Come on, what if? Be creative. Be creative. A thousand points, not a thousand dollars, a thousand points. If between them and Lauren Boebert, we would be having a Democratic majority at this moment. You so, didn't. you know, this idea that that like they are somehow winning, let's just also take a step back and observe that none of these debates resulted in any policy substance. None. This is not a caucus that is organized. Uh, the Freedom Caucus is not organized around any core. Neither is the squad or the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Yeah, Just right? throwing it out there, folks. Policy issue. Progressives, we organize around Medicare for all. We organize around the Green New Deal. What? Like, Except this is what, what? I was talking about earlier. We organized around this. We organized around this. We organized around this. What? And where did it go? Nowhere. You organized around it? But it went nowhere. So, like, no, you didn't. Uh, like, what are on. you talking about? Wait, wait, wait. You know what? I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that I'm going to see now. Hey, audience, help out your friend Kit Cabello on this one. All right. Type one, if all that organizing around Medicare for all, Green New Deal, all of it came into fruition and everything's all a hunk of dory. Type two, if nothing happened, what then what the hell is AOC talking about? That even if it's not all the whole farm all at once, but the building blocks to get us there, that's what we fight for and fight towards. But these folks, they're negotiating around e committee assignments for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah th I mean, that's I'm not expecting the Republican lawmakers to be altruistic human beings. They did that for themselves and they. Look, I hate to break it to people. They won. Yeah, they, they won. They did it for I'm themselves so and it worked. <laughs> yeah. And they and they won. They won. Debate. Hey, change my mind on that one. How did they not win? Certain rules changes. Not all of them are bad, mind you, but um not all, not all, of, them all of them are, are bad. good either. Not all of them are good and either. And they're really organized around grievance. And so, you know, I think sometimes people conflate the necessary work of outside organizing with the internal work of of legislating and the fact of the matter is you cannot do one it's your fault I mean, audience there's a decent amount of organizing you can do outside you it's your what? fault you didn't do enough wait a minute god damn it bill bradley on the live stream chat you won you won you won the chat today buddy didn't she say the squad didn't do force the vote because they wanted committee seats? Now wanting committee seats is a bad thing. And I freaking remember that. That was one of the things. 
if, if anyone else can clarify that, because I remember Bill Bradley that being stated. Audience, audience, if in case I, in case there's anything else I'm missing on that, because I think that was addressed, and even Jimmy Dore talked about it. Everybody talked about it. And how else are you going to get that stuff done if you don't get committee seats? You got to negotiate, AOC. Negotiate. The key word of the day, negotiate. Side of legislative goals. There's plenty. There's plenty. You can organize a tenants union. You can organize, you can unionize your workplace. You can do all sorts of stuff. But the idea that you can push and emphasize legislative goals without an outside, that part I think is untenable. Um, at, at least as a progressive, actually just in general, because the right wing of the Democratic Party also organize, organizes on the outside for their internal goals, but they do it with money. God, and this is a word salad. Holy shit. And well, so, she's still just blaming you know, us uh, out in the world for not most of it's doing enough for her. Uh, towards the people on their side. You're not wrong. YouTube algorithms reward that. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Now, here's what she starts talking about us. Independent media and people calling around social media. Remember, she tweeted at us. Oh, this is violence. Or, you know, I, I remember she used to show up on a lot of independent media back in the day. She doesn't even show up on TYT and they carry water for her the most. So here's AOC in real time, real time being petty towards people that have called her out and were critical of her. I actually uh, picked a bad time to pause it because she's she really has a this is this is like a shocked face right here. It's a, it's a very interesting face. <laughs> It's like she realizes, uh-oh, did I step in something? And yes, you did. Um, you're just playing into the hands of the capitalists. Who uh, you're playing into the hands. Algorithms. Fall in and line. So I'm not saying that all these folks in these media outlets who stir these things up are bad. Far from it. There are incredible people um, doing very thoughtful work. But there are also a lot of people who make and determine what they're going to make their videos on based on YouTube views and based on algorithms. And those. Yeah. But also here's something that people don't know about AOC. She's all on board for internet censorship and having more regulations. Believe you me, these goddamn systems are in place. I'm going to say this again for the people in back or people who don't understand this kind of business, this thing, these censorship stuff is in place. All right. We know firsthand about the censorship and how government is involved in Facebook and Twitter. All right. That's a fact. There is a 100% guarantee. The same thing is also happening here on good old YouTube. Well, if she doesn't want people to make videos for the YouTube algorithm, then, you know, we can she can try and put legislature in place to make it true so that 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 that's not how YouTube works. Like she can start putting some stuff like that into into place to try and fix that problem. Yeah. So that YouTube can't just use an like a normal ag algorithm to to promote some videos and others and it's like make it actually fair, you know? Like exactly. There's things that like she could do that don't include bowing down to big tech and just letting them do whatever they want to all over the time. Exactly. So hold on. I want to play the just a little bit more of this, folks, because it's, again, the pettiness towards independent media. AOC, you want us to stop talking about how bad you guys are? Sh show us. Prove us wrong. Just show do something. us. Do, do something. Do something. You, come on. Come on, Democrats. Don't don't pretend to be stupid with me. Do you want me to treat you like you're morons, Democrats? Because I will. Algorithms almost always the algorithm. reward left infight. No, 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 no. Listen, this algorithm towards independent media, there's no reward whatsoever. There's none of it. There was a time when YouTube used to be a meritocracy. I, I recently got a message from a, a, a new creator who's uh, right now trying to do the same thing we're doing, Lauren, right? And you, you know what I just said to him? Like, hey, the best time to really have gotten started in YouTube was in 2008. That's how bad this entire environment has become. Okay, and we started in 2017. There was a point when YouTube was a meritocracy. This is how you know AOC doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. And yet she's the one who says, there must be more regulation on the internet. You got to control that speech. That's a terrible AOC impression. Yeah. Um, that's what's going to get you your clicks, right? And so you have to be really thoughtful about... Um, and she's secretly calling out Jimmy Dore. You know that, right, folks? See, she's, she's calling out because Jimmy Dore was the one that really challenged her and really called her on the fact that force of vote is a DSA playbook. DSA who also endorsed AOC, just throwing it out there. About some of that and how you navigate in that, because at the end of the day, we are, st we still have very small numbers in Congress and our central goal, at least ours, is in growing those numbers. Okay. Enough of that. 
enough of that. The growing numbers, you have to, if you vote harder for us, poor people, then we get more Democrats in and then things will change. Lauren, I want to get your commentary real quick on uh, that video. And then I want to pull up again a reminder of what Rokana said when confronted about forced to vote. I, I feel like I've I've said what I think about that video. She's making excuses. She's throwing everybody under the bus except for herself. She's not taking responsibility. She's putting the the blame on the voters for not doing enough. Um, and she is just flat out lying <laughs> about about some things too. And it's just, you know, it's it's very telling and it's very frustrating. Exactly. I just don't think I have anything else to say about it. Yeah, so hold on. If you thought, and I played this before earlier this week, but again, Ro Connett was also on that force of vote petition. Here's his word, Sal, when a good old Ryan Grim job asked the question about force of vote, and if the Democrats were able to get the House again, would they challenge Hakeem Jeffries? Listen to this word salad. If Democrats take the House back in, in two years, which seems plausible, it'll probably be by a narrow margin. Is there any thinking going on in the Progressive Caucus now to say, what are we going to demand when that when that comes <laughs> around? Oh, well, Hakeem uh, Jeffries was warned by Kevin McCarthy, right? He said, uh, I, I had a unanimous vote two years ago. Uh, look, I, I, I think there are uh, arguments for it, for, for example, Medicare for All, and get hearings on that to get a vote on that. But here's the difference, and I believe the fundamental difference with the Freedom Caucus and and the Progressive Caucus. The Freedom Caucus, by their own definition, just wants to blow things up and cut things. I mean, that's right. why they're in Congress. And I, I disagree with it. I'm not questioning their motives. They're in Congress because they want to reduce spending, right. uh, cut government. That's an easier thing to be a no on than saying, okay, we want Medicare for all, which is one of, we have to have legislation, draft it, and just say, it, it's a harder thing to do when you have an affirmative agenda. Mm, it's so, so hard. The progressives are never so going difficult. to be blow up government or so in other words, that's that that was just a, a short answer is no. He's like, no, no. I don't want to work that hard. That sounds difficult. That's just it's just too difficult. That's like hard. And I didn't go into Congress to work hard. It's ridiculous. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you know what what can, what can you expect? Okay. AOC is gonna give you a word salad. Ro Khan is gonna give you a word salad. All these politicians are gonna give you a word salad. So at the end of the day, I know a lot of people are saying, Well, wh why you keep on bringing up force to vote? Because force to vote can work. The House Republican Party, the GOP, the Freedom Caucus more in particular, showed that force to vote can work, that they are going to get what they want. And AOC and the squad, the Congressional Progressive Caucus, as soon as the old guard dies and passes away, because that's what's going to happen to all the old people there. Eventually, they do have to pass away. No one lives forever. Um, they're going to be more of the same. And good luck in trusting these politicians. They're all liars. Force the vote does work, and AOC is just going to sit there, blame you, blame independent media, and say, we got to be pragmatic, so vote harder, poor people, in 2024. And then maybe we'll throw you a crumb.